I'm probably going to get in big trouble for doing this video, but it's important. I get asked one question more than any other, probably, um, at least a lot. It's way up there. And that is, can I use miracle Grow? Do you use miracle Grow? Uh, is miracle Grow toxic? In this video, I'm going to tell you straight up why I don't use chemical fertilizers or what I call synthetic fertilizers, why I, I used to, why I don't now, and why I never will. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. Now, first thing I wanna get out there is this video is not meant to shame anyone who uses chemical or synthetic fertilizers. I'm hoping when I get done with this video, I will have persuaded you to go in a different direction but ultimately we're all adults here. Well, maybe not all of us, but most of us are. And uh, you make the decision for you. Years ago, I used a very popular product. Let's call it Wonder Blue. And I used other synthetic fertilizers for years until I learned what they do to the environment, what they do to the soil, the plants, our bodies, and ultimately why they make you reliant on pesticides. Um, I made the change several years ago and I have not looked back. Now, if you would like a follow-up video on the fertilizers that I do use and do feel are safe, um, both ones you can purchase and ones you can make at home for free, let me know down in the comments and I'll do a follow-up video including all of that information. I'm not gonna get political here, but even if the company who made Wonder Blue uh, made it organic and they do have some organic version of it. Um, I still wouldn't buy it. And mainly because I don't want to support the company who basically makes wonder blue. We all know what wonder blue is, right? I'm not going to go real deep here, but you can do a quick Google search and find out more about that. And I'm sure you've heard of them. Now, that being said, synthetic fertilizers seem like a great option. They're relatively cheap. They're high in NPK. And NPK is the three numbers that are on the front of the box or bag or container that your fertilizer comes in. The first number, number is N, nitrogen. The next number is P, phosphorus. And the third number is K, which is potassium. Now, nitrogen promotes uh, a lot of healthy growth leaves, stems, phosphorus help promotes healthy roots, and potassium promotes healthy uh, flowers and fruiting. Now, each one of them helps a little bit with each, but those are what those three numbers are known for. So if you want to remember uh, what those numbers mean, just remember shoots, roots, fruits. Although if you're anything like me, I start to go, wait, roots, sh fruits, shoot, what? So remember surf, shoots, roots, fruits, surf. It helps me at least. Synthetic fertilizers have high NPK, like 16, 16, 16, 20, 20, 20. Some even have like 46, 0, 0. A lot of the ones you put on your lawn will have that. Now you compare that to organic fertilizers that have NPKs like 242, 531. Obviously my plants would like the synthetic better, right? It's just more food. My plants or anything like me, they like more food. Now, are there drawbacks to having too much food? Yeah, for me, a little bit. For plants, uh, it can be very harmful. In fact, if you don't mix very carefully and apply very carefully, high numbers like synthetic fertilizers have can burn your plants, almost sometimes to the point of killing them. I've done it. But let's say that you apply it, mix it and apply it perfectly. Then everything's okay, right? What you're gonna notice when you do that, if you apply it carefully and, and, and well, is you're gonna notice a lot of really vigorous growth, green growth, new stems, new leaves, almost unnatural growth. Think a human on steroids. Those are good for us, right? Of course not, because it's unnatural growth. It's unsustainable growth. The plant put, puts on a flush of growth and it becomes very weak, 
very floppy and you have to feed it more and more and it catches up with it and it's just going to be beyond the point of no return and you're going to notice because you're going to have a weak plant you're going to notice it's going to start being attacked by pests because pests go for the weak plants now the plant has to try to huff and puff to keep up with the growth of itself and to put on defenses to fight these bugs and guess what it can't do it so you're going to have to rely on chemical pesticides and i know a company that will provide you all the pesticides you want and guess what it's the same one that sold you the fertilizer conspiracy i don't know now if you are worried about the environment and you are pointing your fingers at cow farts then you also have to point your fingers at chemical fertilizers. There is so much, if you look at the, the country nationwide, other countries as well, but especially the United States who have a lot of agriculture, big ag, there is so much of an overabundance of nitrogen, especially applied to fields, farms, and even home gardens. I mean, if we take the cumulative uh, amount of home gardens, that's a lot of land. Lawns alone, all of that extra nitrogen the plant simply cannot take up into their system, it is released into the atmosphere as nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide. Again, not getting political, just stating facts. Another thing is when we're using synthetic fertilizers, it's a very easy thing to do, right? Just mix it up, put it out there and you're done. And so we stop relying on actually building our soil. Who wants to go lug comp bags of compost, go get a trailer full of compost, when all you have to do is mix up a bottle of blue stuff and pour it on? The soil is gonna degrade very, very quickly. We're seeing it across the country in farmland. Not only that, but nitrogen applied for long periods of time actually start to degrade the topsoil. It also depletes the other nutrients and minerals found in the soil. If all you're adding is NPK, 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 what about everything else? It's gone. So even fruits and vegetables you buy in the store are nowhere near as nutritious as they used to be. So if our food is lacking all those other minerals and nutrients, then our bodies are as well. Synthetic fertilizers also make it harder for your soil to hold onto water, which creates runoff, which number one, wastes water, Number two, it is running off into ponds, lakes, streams, and eventually the ocean. There is a huge dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico from all of this fertilizer in the Midwest or middle of the country that is farming and mainly by the Mississippi River that flows out into the ocean. All of that nitrogen flowing into the ocean is more than the ocean can even take. And so huge uh, sections of the ocean are dying off. Now let's reel it back in to our own gardens. I've talked at length on videos in my new book um, about building the life in the soil, both unseen life and the life you can actually see. Synthetic fertilizers kill off whole populations of fungi, good bacteria, beneficial nematodes. It doesn't directly harm earthworms, however, once all those other things are killed off and the soil starts to degrade, the earthworms ain't sticking around. They're going down the street to your neighbor who swore off synthetic fertilizers and now has a thriving ecosystem in their garden soil. Back to Wonder Blue. It is probably the most popular synthetic fertilizer out there, right? Millions of people use it. And generally what happens is when millions of people start to use a product, the company that creates that product pumps more and more high quality ingredients into it. That's not how that works. Oh yeah, they start to use the cheapest stuff available. And just because it contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, doesn't necessarily mean those are natural sources of that. They are created in a lab. And they probably, those three ingredients won't harm you or your pets directly. But the way they are produced synthetically produces off chemicals that can harm you, your pets, your kids. And do we really know what the other materials in the fertilizer are? You can go to the grocery store and get a loaf of bread and not recognize half of the ingredients in it. 
So do we really know what they're putting in this blue crystally powder? In fact, it's a general rule out there not to let your kids and pets into an area where these products are applied for 72 hours. That should tell you something right there. We shouldn't have to wear a hazmat suit to spray something on our food that we're then going to eat. Ugh. This has been a negative video and I hate that, but this is a question I'm asked almost every day in some form or another. And so I had to just address it. But again, if you would like me to create another video talking about fertilizers that not only are safe for you, but help build the soil up, that's what's needed. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see that. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. And if you wouldn't mind sharing this video on social media, I would appreciate it. You guys have a great weekend and uh, keep growing. I'll see you next time.